I mean, look at that mess. Hey, is this a good YouTube shot? Is this a viral shot or just the logs viral? Well, folks, today we're going to be sawing up some butternut. Uh, it's the last of a pretty good batch I had. These are the worst of the worst. They're pretty ugly. Got a lot of rot. Oh, uh, this has got this nice, great big old hole in it. Lord knows what's going to come out of that thing. Loch Ness monster or python. Godzilla's going to come out of it. We'll find out. We're going to saw these guys up into charcuterie boards. Christmas is right around the corner. Nobody likes live edge. Since these are related to walnut, they're going to look real good. Uh, for those of you who don't know, butternut, it's very closely related to the walnut. That's the only time we get them is when a logger mistakenly cuts them down, thinking that they're walnut. So seriously, please, y'all hit the subscribe button, y'all hit the like button. It doesn't cost a penny to subscribe. It's not like you're... Uh, signing your life away. So this is about the time I looked at my pressure gauge and realized that my band had not been tensioned enough. I've got a little bit of a slow leak on that system. It's basically composed of an airbag that uh, you use a hydraulic ram to compress the air in the airbag that, that tightens up the band. And uh, like I say, I noticed I had a leak Hadn't fixed it yet, but it's one of them things that just, I'll get to it tomorrow. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm not real excited about cutting up these nasty logs. My hook's not even digging into the rotten bark. It's kind of one of those, man, I just want to get this mess over with. I got something more exciting to do. I don't know what it is, but I got something more exciting to do. Right about here on this drag back, I figured this log was gonna turn out okay. You know, even though you've got the machine running, you've really gotta use your ears. And the sound of that uh, slab hitting that metal table sounded solid. So I'm starting to perk up a little bit here. I'm gonna do a little bit of turn and burn. One thing you ought to notice, you always hear me talking about that note. I think it's called an E flat. That means the blade is doing the proper amount of work and I'm sawing at the proper speed. This log is not held in real good. It's got a rotten uh, outer shell. I'm afraid to clamp it too much. Uh, I'm really trying to hold my speed back because if you start going too fast, the log will roll right out of the clamps. But every now and then, if you listen close, you'll hear that solid note. That's what I'm looking for. I'm trying to keep speeding up making sure I got a flat cut until I hit that note. The whole time, I'm trying to get a feel for this log. There's a lot of things going on because this log is not a solid log. It's got a lot of rot in it. Now, another thing you'll probably notice is how slow I'm entering this log. The issue is that I don't want to have a high impact because it may actually pop out of the clamp. It's hard to clamp on rot. Here's something you've probably never seen. All my clamps and all my backstops are now dead low, completely recessed. If you'll notice the log is curling back down towards the bed, there's no place for me to clamp it anyway. It's the backside of a circle. Uh, since I'm live edge sawing, I need to be able to slice all the way down through the log up to that last board, the dog board. Since the clamps can't hold and the bark is rotted, I'll just pull everything down. So I'm using the weight of the log in a slow sawing speed to keep the log steady on the mill. When I'm sawing the top, I can keep the clamps just under halfway. The goal is to saw down enough where I can get to the area where the log is starting to taper up. 
that lets me get a hold. You'll notice how low I've got the backstops. Even though I've got the whole log to clamp on, I've got them pretty low. I'd like to saw all the way through the center of the log and even down further before I have to unclamp and reclamp. Once again, you can see how slow and gentle I'm being getting into this log with the blade. Having it clamped so low on rotten bark or rotten sapwood, if I hit it hard, it could be a recipe for disaster. I could pop this whole mess out. So better to be a little bit careful, a little bit slow up front than have to do damage control later. Here's another little tip. I couldn't talk with the noise of the sawmill going, but what I'm trying to show is that always, not most of the time, but always put your backstops a little higher than your clamp, especially on a log like this. That way, you never have to worry about hitting your clamp with the blade. If you clear the backstops, you'll clear the clamp. It's one of the most important things you need to be doing day after day after day. Always set the clamp lower than the backstops. So this is important. I've got my backstops up a few inches trying to support this log. Now watch what happens. And remember, I just made a cut and the log stayed down. Now it's going to jump out. I didn't change anything. That's the unpredictability of a rotted bark log on the mill. Uh, it's not a real big deal. I'll slowly back the blade out and I'll reset that by putting the log clamp under the half log and I'll lift up and I'm going to pull it back nice and gently and now is the time when a bunch of yellow jackets decided they wanted to come and talk to me. I didn't get stung but I was starting to get aggravated now. Since I had messed with that log and put it out of position now I got to use the drag back to gently slide it back on top of the log bump so I can get back to sawing it. Now I'm being real gentle because I know this one's a jumper. You can even see me stop as soon as I get in that log because I saw that thing jump and I I wanted to let everything settle back down. And you can tell from my body posture that this thing now has my full attention. Remember, I'm going this slow because I'm relying on the weight of that half log to keep it on the deck. And uh, you could see it move right there. The issue I have, again, is that the bark, since it is rotted, is giving way. And since I'm sawing live edge slabs, I have to leave the bark, or what's left of it, on the board. I cannot just do a conventional edge it off and hold it and saw it. So this is getting fun. Now I'm going to get the smallest of the small. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but right now I'm thinking maybe I ought to just throw this thing on the burn pile. I'm not sure this one's got enough wood in it to even make a toothpick out of. And then I figure, ah, why not? What's the worst that could happen? Couldn't be any worse than that last one. Except now that I'm coming back, I see a bunch more yellow jackets flying around my control station and where I'm working. So I thought I would try to really aggravate them by thumping down with the log hook, see if I could figure out where they're coming from. So now I got an ugly log in front of me and a bunch of upset yellow jackets behind me. It's turning into a good day. Now this one was actually a pretty easy log. The good news is it was a non-event. I was hoping that was gonna happen because I'm still looking at this big log with this big hole in the side wondering what that thing's gonna do. I had to go get the skid steer and try to get this log on the log deck because when I loaded it, it fell off the side. So even this last log is fighting me a little bit.
And here's when I know something's not right. I'm having trouble getting this log to steady down. Its balance is not right. I see the way it ought to be laying, but I can't get it to stay that way. You can see me juggling it around. There's something not right with this one. And this is just about the time the yellow jackets come back at me. I mean, really? Just, just, let's just do one more thing. Let's get this dead gum log off this sawmill. Let's get this thing cut up. Let the bugs leave me alone. Let's figure out why this thing ain't riding correct. I'm starting to get a bit aggravated again. I mean, how hard is this? This is sawing a log. I kind of do this for a living. Once again, right about here, the yellow jackets are buzzing my arm. I'm starting to get the feeling there's something wrong with this log. The blade is going through it way too erratically. You can see the head speed up. You can see it slow down. That typically means only one thing, and that is not good. So I decide to stop sawing it and pull it back and see what's inside. And yeah, boy, there you go. Now, I'm sure you can't read lips, especially since my back is turned, but if you look at my expression, my head shake, uh, you'll know that there was one or two bad words said, and now all of a sudden, those yellow jackets are coming back at me again. Look at these yellow jackets here. Now comes the fun part. I gotta start pulling some of these boards off and see if any of them are salvageable. I'm thinking right about now, this was a total waste. Let's see, this one looks real good, doesn't it? That's a no. One down the old commode. Gee, the next one looks just as bad or a lot worse. That one's gonna get flushed too. I don't know. That one looks like a good one. Yeah. There's a lot of air in that log. No wood. So now it's time to do an ejection. How to eject a log off the sawmill. This is an important skill. It's important to do it in such a way that it doesn't damage anything. Of course, if it landed on a herd of yellow jackets, I would not bother me at all. That must be why they're coming so much. They're smelling all the rot in the log. So, I mean, look at that mess. Hey, is this a good YouTube shot? Is this a viral shot or just the logs viral? First of all, you'll notice I got two cross ties down here. Those are higher than the log loader arms. That way, when I roll this nasty thing off, it does not land on my sawmill. So basically, you take the two plane clamp, move it all the way to the inboard side, rev up the engine, lift up the clamp, shove the whole thing off to the side, and if you get enough speed, it just plops right down on the cross ties. It does not land on your loader arms. And no damage is done. Easy peasy. The rest is pretty self-explanatory. You pick it up with a tractor and go throw it in the burn pit. There we are. Nice looking wood. I mean, it's butternut. And it's narrow and it's not nice looking. But I mean, it's nice looking for narrow, live-edged butternut. Between the yellow jackets, the ugly scrawny half rotten log, the live bed sawing, the logs moving, what I'm sawing. Did I mention the yellow jackets? Um, you know, I've had better times, but hey, at least I got some wood out of it and it didn't take too long. We're going to 
going to do our afternoon walk to the mailbox. This one's Nivy, and that one's Sadie. Well, y'all, yeah, I appreciate you coming out today to visit us here at the old Hobby Hardwood. We've got the mail, I've got Chip. We've said hi to the donkeys, I didn't get stung. We ruined a few butternut logs, found one that was hollow. It's actually a pretty good day as things go. A lot worse could have happened. So y'all have a good day. We'll see you. Hang on, Chip. <laughs> to top it off, looks like a bird has pooped on my windshield. Now we're done for the day.